Jack Dorsey and the other Silicon Valley billionaires to federal court. And we will keep on fighting until we have stopped this assault on our liberties and until we have restored the sacred right to freedom of speech for every single American. That was former President Donald Trump discussing his big tech lawsuit at the Conservative Political Action Conference in Dallas. But if you were hoping to watch his speech on the organizer's YouTube page, you're out of luck. The American Conservative Union says YouTube froze their account this past Friday after they posted Trump's original announcement of the class action lawsuit. In a statement, the ACU's chairman said, quote, it is clear that YouTube censored CPAC because we stood with Trump. This is another example of big tech censoring content with which they disagree in order to promote their, the political positions they favor. Trump's lawsuit is being led by the America First Policy Institute, whose video of the original announcement was deleted by YouTube. Joining us now is the chair of the board of the America First Policy Institute, Linda McMahon. Linda, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thanks so much for having me. Well, does it come to any surprise uh, that they deleted this video off YouTube of, of <laughs> talking about the lawsuit? Well, you know, it's very interesting that they did, considering the fact that we had sued them. We, AFPI has not sued, uh, but Donald Trump, in conjunction with many other parties, are suing, you know, in a class action lawsuit for infringement of, you know, our First Amendment rights. So it was a bit surprising, given the fact that this lawsuit has been filed for this very thing, that they did freeze the account. And even Brooke Rollins, who's the president and CEO of America First Policy Institute, spoke. And I actually just Googled her today to see if I could, uh, could watch her speech and went on YouTube. The only thing you could find was from 2015, when she was the president of the Texas um, Policy uh, Public Policy Foundation. And so couldn't even hear her speech either. So, you know, it's just showing what we have to fear in America if, in fact, our First Amendment rights are taken away. If big tech is, in fact, colluding with the United States government and becoming a state actor, it's really scary that our First Amendment rights could be taken away. And this is a very powerful lawsuit. In fact, there was um, an opinion piece in the Wall Street Journal today that talked about how AFPI and the president or the president and the, um, the other members who have been taken down could, in fact, win this lawsuit just because, right. you know, these big tech operators do collude with the government, you know, for what do they put up relative to COVID, uh, hydroxychloroquine, uh, when it was first, you know, uh, thought would not be doing a good job, if you will. They took that down. Then later it was shown that it would be uh, probably effective in early stages. Now, that was because Mark Zuckerberg was, in fact, talking to Anthony Fauci, who was recommending right. what they put up and what they take down. That made them a state actor in this, I think, and it makes them very liable in this suit. And Linda, let me ask you more about that point, because that excellent Wall Street Journal uh, editorial by Vivek Ramaswamy, who was actually on our slow show last week, I think it made a great point. Uh, the government is not allowed to effectively outsource the suppression of the Bill of Rights. And I think that's what's happening here. So my question to you, Linda, is are these companies truly private or are they acting as public utilities and should they be regulated as public utilities? Well, I do believe that they are acting as public utilities and, and therefore... You know, the Section 230 under the Communications Decency Act in 1996 was to provide uh, the Internet with the ability to take down uh, child porn and to work against children trafficking. And it hasn't really been updated, you know, since then, except, you know, now that it's still granting immunity to big tech to do the very thing, you know, that they are not allowed to do. Congress cannot censor free speech, and it therefore cannot delegate to others the right to censor free speech. You know, free speech is one of the things that makes us very different from many of the other countries around the world. People come here for the freedom of speech. And if we are now looking at these big tech companies who are acting, I think, as utility companies and therefore should not be able to have immunity under this Section 230. You're either a private company and you have to be open to all of the liability provisions that a private company would be, or you are a utility which is regulated or, um, or a media company 
just like newspapers and television stations are. You don't have protection of liability. And uh, that is something that really has to be looked at by Congress and changed. Linda, I know that a lot of our viewers uh, out there have been affected by big tech censorship. I'm, I know a lot of them are fired up by this lawsuit. What kind of response have you gotten from the everyday American that has said, I'm sick and tired of what's happening, my voice is not being heard? We are having an incredible response. As a matter of fact, the, the website is takeonbigtech.com. And we have, since we launched this on Wednesday, when the president made his announcement, when President Trump made his announcement, we've now had over 50,000 respondents to that site. And it just grows every day. They're telling their stories, how they were censored, or they agree with us in what we are doing, or they're very hopeful that the president and, and the other uh, folks who are part of this lawsuit, this class action lawsuit, will prevail because they think that big tech has, has overstepped. Now, Big tech has done a lot of good things. Social media has done a lot of good things by connecting people, by providing forums. But when you step over the line, when you become too powerful, when you start to become a state actor and collude, if you will, with the United States government on what goes up and what goes down, when you become subject to fears from Congress when you're in there and you're being questioned by different senators about you know, what you're putting up and what you're not putting up and that you might, you might fear that you will now not have liability if you continue to say things or not say things. I mean, right. it's just well, been unbelievable what's been going on and that has to stop. And Linda, I think these big tech firms, they showed us just how arrogant they are. I mean, the irony of it, right, that they actually took down the video of the president and your organization announcing this lawsuit. I mean, the, the rich irony there, it shows us that Silicon Valley is not very afraid. But perhaps with litigants like you, they will be at some point. Linda McMahon of AFPI, thank you so much for joining us this evening. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.